Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the BMW Underbed Gooseneck Kit on a 2022 GMC Sierra 1500. Now this is what it's going to look like when it's installed and you can see pretty quickly that your ball just kind of drops in here and your safety chain loops are spring loaded so it's going to keep it nice and flat. And the great part about having a gooseneck, especially this one here, is going to be the fact that when you're not using this, you can simply take the ball, turn it over, drop it in place, and your bed is still a truck bed. And you can see the clearances here really don't take up anything. In fact, the safety chain loops here are about flush with the corrugations on the bed, so you're not losing any bed space, yet you're adding a lot of utility by being able to tow that gooseneck. Now this is great because you don't have to worry about finding that ball, you don't have to store it in your truck, it's going to stay right here, and when you latch in place it's not going to go anywhere. Now when you are ready to tow, pretty easy, you just pull this up, there's a nice little spot for your finger to pull it, flip it over, you can drop it in anyway, you can see there's four holes so it doesn't matter, drop that in, latch it in place, and then you can hook up to your trailer. Now as far as towing capacity, goosenecks obviously offer quite a bit of capacity and this one will give you 30,000 pounds of gross trailer weight rating. Now it also has 7,500 pounds of vertical limit here. So overall pretty hefty. You do wanna make sure that the truck is capable of obviously towing that before just hooking up and going. But the gooseneck is definitely not gonna be the lowest point of what you're gonna be able to tow. Now there's no major drilling or cutting necessary as far as mounting this up except for what you see here in the bed to get the holes to get your safety loops and obviously the receiver here but overall it's pretty well bolt up and it's going to take you probably a long day maybe uh, if you have an extra set of hands or someone that's done it before you could probably knock this out and i'd say about four or five hours if you've done it now i'm going to also walk you through all the steps that way you can use the video as a reference to get your gooseneck installed begin our installation we're going to go ahead and lower down our spare tire that's going to give us more space to work and it's just going to give us clearance while being under the truck so go ahead and get your spare tire lowered down and removed remove our heat shield here where our spare tire was and it's just going to be six 13 millimeter bolts so we'll go ahead get these removed now we're going to be reinstalling this later so keep it handy and i suggest having all your hardware kept in a nice organized spot that way you'll have it for reinstallation Now later on in the instruction manual, they're gonna have you remove this portion of the exhaust. You can see where it just wise off. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just do that now. It's gonna give us a little bit more space while doing the other steps under here. So you can see there's two studs. These are gonna be 13 millimeter nuts that we're gonna take off. Um, and then we have our isolator. So we'll go ahead and get these removed first. And sometimes, you know, it depends on the mileage of your truck and the environment you live in, but if these are a little bit tricky, you can put some penetrating oil to kind of knock these loose a little bit. Now where our isolator is, instead of just pushing this through, we can go ahead and just remove the entire mount here. This is gonna be a 15 millimeter socket that I'm using. So we'll go ahead and get this taken off. So you're gonna have a tab here on this bracket, so just kind of slide this back a little bit and that should unhinge. And we're gonna kind of just work this out. And then once we have this out, we can slide this past the studs and then pull this out and set it aside later. Come to this heat shield here and we're gonna need to cut the front portion out and that way we can actually get our gooseneck in place. We wanna make sure that we're not going past uh, or having this protrude past the cross member. So I'm gonna cut right along here and then we'll just make that cut using some snips. And then up front, there's gonna be some T25s that are similar to this. That way we can remove those, get this heat shield out of the way. So tin snips seem to work pretty well on these. Um, if you have another cutting method, you can go ahead and use that. Just be careful to obviously not catch anything in the process. And also this can get pretty sharp, so just kind of be careful throughout this process as well. You might want to wear some gloves. Now if you're having trouble getting a straight cut here um, because of the exhaust kind of being in the way, we're going to lower this down. Later on, they say that it's optional and we might as well do it now just to make it easier on ourselves. I'm gonna start here. We have our isolators, two of them, and they're rubber, so sometimes they can be a little bit tricky to get off, so I'm gonna spray them down with some silicone. 
You can use penetrating oil or even soapy water here. And then I'm just gonna take my pry bar and get this pried off. Get this one taken off as well. We're also gonna go ahead and remove this bracket just like we did on the other portion of the exhaust. Now this can get a little tricky because we have this little, little baffle decorative design here. So I'm just gonna kind of lift this up and try to get this out here. So a little tip here, you can kind of, if it's tight, you can use the pry bar against the frame rail, kind of pop this out. Now do be careful, it is gonna kind of want to drop on you. And uh, we're gonna see that this probably needs to be supported. So I'm gonna go th ahead and run a strap across here. It resting on the axle might be a little much. We could also put just a block here just to kind of keep this from supporting itself. So now we have quite a bit of additional space here to make our cut with our snips, but also for later steps, this is gonna be beneficial. So I've gone ahead and made my cut here. Now there may be some portions here that I wasn't able to get a clean cut on. We can always kind of bend this back to get our clearance here on the heat shield, or we can do some additional trimming. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and get this taken off. Uh, as I mentioned before, there are gonna be some T25s up forward. So I'll go grab my bit and we'll get that removed. So it looks like we have two of these Torx bits. So we'll go ahead and get these removed. One that's kind of tucked here by all of our wire harness is gonna be a little bit tricky to get to. So um, I'm using my T25 bit with just a small ratcheting um, driver like that we have here. And that way we can get this one taken out. Now do be careful. This one's been giving me a little bit of trouble and you don't want to round this out. Now granted, we're not gonna be putting these T25s back up. So if you have to, you can drill this out, but uh, uh, just kind of be careful, make sure you are using the proper bit. You don't want to round it out. So now we can go ahead and remove this heat shield and we can get rid of this because we will not be reinstalling it. Now to gain us a little bit more clearance, we're going to be moving some brackets and the first one's going to be our brake line bracket here. Um, so we have two 13 millimeter nuts or bolts, we'll take those off. And we're going to allow this to just kind of hang freely here. Now we're also going to need to remove this bracket and that's going to be, it looks like there's two 10 millimeter nuts here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead just because of space clearance and use a ratcheting 10 millimeter socket or wrench here. And I think that's going to be our best option. And once it's not loose, you can actually go ahead and get this taken off by hand. We'll go ahead and get the other one. This one's kind of in the middle of the bracket here. Now the frame coating can kind of give it a uh, feel like it's still attached and it is locked into the frame via some, uh, there's some slide locks here. So we'll just kind of wiggle this to get it loose from that uh, undercoating. And then you can see those two tabs that slide in the frame. So we'll go ahead and just kind of set this here for now. If you go on your passenger frame rail, you're gonna find that this wire loom is sitting on top of the frame rail and that's where we're gonna have our cross member. So we're gonna to wanna to separate this from uh, the frame. So we can pop this plastic clip up and out. Um, we can also separate the wire to make it a little bit easier just by kind of taking a flat head and if you pop the clip, that's gonna open it up and that way we can kind of get the clip off a little bit easier. But you can also pry the whole thing off and that's also going to work with the flat head, so just kind of go under, make sure you're getting the plastic, pop up, there we go. So once that's taken out, what we're gonna do is just kind of pull this a little bit towards the inside, and we may remove the other two, or this one here at least, to kind of give us a little bit more room to kind of get this out of the way of the frame rail. So now we're gonna come to our wheel wells, and we're gonna wanna peel this up, and that way we can get our cross member bars through here. So there's gonna be a T15 right here, that's where the flap is. And then you're gonna to go to the forward one and get this. Now they also say to remove the retainer clip that these go into, not exactly sure why. Um, I'm gonna leave mine in place for now. I don't wanna bend that up and cause it to not hold onto this Torx bit. So if we need to, we can remove that later, but we'll go ahead get these taken out and that way we can peel up our liner and just kind of fold it to create our gap there. 
Now, if you are having trouble getting a shot on this with the short ratchet like I have here, what you can do is actually, uh, you can put a jack on the rear hitch of the truck and kind of raise the body up and that's gonna allow this to be above the tire and making it a little bit easier so you have a straight shot. Go ahead and do the same thing on this forward one. So once we have that taken out, we can go ahead and just kind of peel this up. So just kind of grab this lower portion and then we're gonna pull this out. And you can see that's gonna create our gap here to get our cross members put in place. So uh, you can go ahead and repeat on the other side of the vehicle as well. So now we're gonna get ready to cut the hole in our bed to allow the gooseneck to gain access here. Now, this is a step that you really wanna take your time, make sure you have it set up because uh, you know, if you're a little bit off or if it walks, it can kind of make it not look so nice. Also make sure that your measurements are good. So with this being a short bed, we're gonna measure from the end here. And I'm just using the instruction manual as reference. Now, since we do have a bed liner in here, that does add a little bit of thickness. So we need to account for that. So I'm gonna add an eighth of an inch to the measurement in the instruction manual, and I think that's gonna put us at a nice spot. Um, so I've marked that with my paint marker. I also measured from one side to make sure that it was equal. That way it's centered up, but really it should be on the center of this rib. So just if you need to measure it to get a nice point, go ahead. So I'm gonna make a pilot hole here. So now I'm using a four inch hole saw here and uh, now you're going to want to be careful because if it catches it's going to yank your wrist side to side and that can offset um, the hole a little bit and you can also hurt your wrist. So I just kind of put it between my legs as I do this and the bed liner is going to catch a little bit but just make sure you keep this nice and perpendicular with the bed and make your hole. So now I'm going to just take a file and kind of rub the inside edge here to get those burrs taken out. Go ahead and vacuum up our shavings here. Since this is going to be a raw metal edge, we want to coat that with some paint to prevent any rust or corrosion long term. So you can use a clear coat or a black spray paint to just kind of spray those edges. I'm using a paint marker here just to kind of keep it nice and clean, but make sure you coat that raw metal edge completely. Now this portion here is going to be our cross member and you can see there's this little notch here. This is going to feed um, in between where the bed and the cross member is, of, or at least where the frame is. So we're gonna be passing it through here and you're gonna have the heel or the point facing up and that's gonna kind of slide through here and we're gonna make our way over to the passenger side. But as you can tell, this is gonna be kind of a rough angle to do. Um, so to make it a little bit easier, what I suggest doing is putting a um, a floor jack and raising up on the hitch and that's going to allow this body to go up making our clearance nice and easy to be able to pass this through and that way we can get a straight shot. So since I'm on a lift I'm going to be just raising up the rear end but it's going to be the same concept that you're going to use with your floor jack and this is just again to gain us that clearance make it a little bit easier for us. So now that we have some clearance I can actually use the tire here to kind of support this as I pass it through and then I'm going to head underneath the truck and then just feed this over until we get it resting on the passenger side. And we are going to be making room for our center section here. So we're going to want to uh, kind of get this pushed back and then it, we're going to rotate it here to get these holes facing vertical. So just a little rotation here. It is gonna be a little bit tight. Now before I kind of get this in place, I wanna pass my bolt through the second hole from the driver's side. And then we have this rubber O-ring and this should be in that kind of uh, groove section here. So just pass the O-ring. The thread should be facing towards the back of the truck and this is just gonna hold our bolt in place. So just get that O-ring kind of pressed on there to where it's not gonna move. So with that bolt in place, I'm gonna kind of just get this pushed in and we should be able to get this 
kind of vertical here. And we're going to just push this back against the shock mount right there. And that should kind of, it might not rest, but this is kind of the position we want. It's still pretty vertical, um, but this is going to give us room for our center section to get in place. Now, when pushing that back, I see why those retainer clips need to be removed. Uh, they do catch on this cross member, so we are going to get those popped off. You can pinch them with pliers on the back, or you can just simply get a small flathead screwdriver on this little lip here, and then they should pop out. So let's get those removed. And once you get it out, this is kind of what it looks like here. Um, and again, I just kind of pried here and slowly worked my way. You can see this portion's kind of uh, bent back a little bit, but uh, the main thing is, is once we pop this back in place, it should snap in. So just keep these handy. So I'll go ahead and get the one on the other side removed as well. So with those retainer clips out, now I can go ahead, push this against the shock mount, and then I'm going to push this side forward. And this is just going to make a little bit more space for when we put our center section in place. So it uh, looks to be like this is going to be a little bit wider opening here just to kind of clear for the fuel tank. So just go ahead, push that until it stops. So now you're going to want to grab your fish wire. You're also going to have your locking strap, your oval nut, this locking plate here. This is just going to be a retainer and a carriage bolt. So what I'm going to do here is just put our locking strap on and then just get our carriage bolt started on our threads. So just coil this on. And then I'm just going to pull my fish wire through. At this point I can feed my locking strap in. I'm going to kind of have to kind of get it at an angle here, so figure out what works best. And that slides in, and then our carriage bolt as well. So we're going to kind of pull from the outside here, and what we want is our carriage bolt to seat in that locking strap and the threads to come out through the outside of the frame here. Now, before we pull our fish wire off, what we're going to do is we're going to feed our oval spacer onto the end of the fish wire, and then this is just going to go in and kind of fill that hole there. So that should sit right there in the hole of the frame. And then we're gonna take our little retainer clip and this is just gonna hold this in place for us. Press this on here. And I actually have my finger pushing through on the inside portion of the frame rail, just to kind of keep our carriage bolt in place. And I think that's gonna make it a little bit easier um, we can go ahead and actually take our fish wire off because this is kind of tricky to feed over. So if you want, you can go ahead and uncoil this. But again, keep your finger on the inside of the frame so that carriage bolt doesn't drop in the frame. Otherwise, you're going to have to fish that back out with a magnet and it can get pretty tricky. So we'll just get this and you can kind of just thread this on there. Make sure that your oval's kind of sitting in that frame rail. And this is just gonna kind of hold this in place for us. Now we can go ahead and repeat on the other side. So now we're gonna get our side plates installed and the driver's side is gonna have the decal that explains using the handle. Now, I do believe this little turnbuckle here might be for uh, part of the active suspension or something along those lines. Be careful here because this is just plastic, but this will slide kind of in here uh, in between the arm and that little bracket that this is attached to. And this should poke through that circle hole and then you're gonna align the stud that we just passed through right here. So make sure that the single hole is uh, going through where that stud is. And then what we're gonna do is just finish this up with flat washer, our split washer, and then a nut. And I'm just going to make this hand tight for now. Now on the passenger side, we're going to use our stud that we passed through for the forward hole. So make sure you have that passed through, but it does kind of get tight here. Um, you're going to need to make sure that cross member is pushed all the way back against that shock mount. And it might get a little bit tight, but you want this to kind of sandwich um, between that cross member and that should kind of create a spot here um, to where this should hold it in place. So now that they, we have this in place, I'm going to go ahead and put that same hardware on this side. So now 
We have our brackets in place and the other two holes are gonna be for our U-bolt. And um, I'm gonna just pass this over our frame. You can kind of see this, uh, where the weld is here on the frame. It's gonna kind of sit in that portion, but we need to make sure that it's not gonna be rubbing against any of the components. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure to pass this through the wire loom as well as behind those brake uh, lines. And that way we have our bracket loose. We can kind of just move this out of the way to where they're not stressing them out too much. But again, you don't wanna pinch them too much or bend them too hard or create a kink. So once you kind of have that in place, you'll be able to swing this over to where we can align it with the holes on our side bracket. You may need to kind of move the bracket up and down a little bit to kind of get this to feed in. But again, just kind of, once we get both those studs passed through, we should be looking good. Now you can see that the U-bolt does sit at an angle. So uh, you are gonna need to work that to just make sure it's not gonna be vertical there, but you should be able to get both those studs passed through. And then I'm just gonna follow those up with our flat washer, our split washer and nut. And again, we're just gonna go hand tighten on this. And really all of this hardware, I say hand tighten, but you almost just need a few threads started and you kind of want it loose because there is gonna be a little bit of give as we put the rest of our sections in and we wanna be able to have that little bit of adjustability, make sure everything's nice and squared up before tightening down. So now we can also go ahead and repeat this same step on the other side. So now we're gonna take our center section and you're gonna see the spring-loaded section is where the handle is gonna go. That needs to be on the driver's side, that way you have the proper orientation. Now this is just gonna kinda of go up in here and, and honestly just rest for a little bit until we get our rear cross member in. So I'm gonna slide it a little bit up over the gas tank here and just be careful where you rest this because the plastic components, obviously this is pretty heavy. Um, so find a nice spot to kind of rest it. So I have mine uh, kind of right here. There's this bracket. I can go ahead and just kind of keep this in place to where it's not going to fall. Now before putting our rear cross member in place, we want to go through and you'll, you'll see in the threads here, there's powder coat finish. So I can't exactly hand tighten these in without them binding up. So to make it easier, once it's up there, we'll go ahead, take our bolt, thread it down as much as we can with hand, by hand, and then we'll just kind of run this through and that's going to clean those threads out for us. And go ahead and repeat for the remaining holes. So now we're going to feed this in. Um, you may need to put that floor jack again um, on the hitch. The holes should be closer to the top. So just going to keep that aligned as you feed this through. And we're going to make our way over to the passenger side frame. Just like our other cross member, we're just going to pass this over until it makes its way to the passenger side frame. Now before we want to attach our center section to anything, we actually want to make sure that we have this lifted up into place. And what I've found that works pretty well here is just using some jack stands in the bed um, and a ratchet strap. We're going to be able to kind of pull this up and that's going to help us keep it nice and aligned here to where we'll be able to hold this in place while we tighten it down. And once we have it nice and centered exactly where we want it, just make sure that this is tight and not going to go anywhere. And this is, again, just going to make it to where when we do tighten this down, it'll be exactly where we want it to be. So if you're following along in the paper instructions, you might have noticed that I did things a little bit out of step. Normally you have the center section put in place and then the rear cross member and then you do the side. But I personally think getting the side plates kind of um, in, in the spot where they need to be right away kind of helps get everything lined up a little bit better. Uh, you can either way it's going to work just fine. Um, but we're going to continue on by getting our center section attached to our cross member. So what I'm going to do here is our front cross member. I'm gonna slide this where we have that bolt with the O-ring. We're gonna get this passed up into our center section here. And then all of our hardware, I'm just gonna be loosely putting on, um, again, just to kind of allow for some of that adjustability, make sure everything's nice and squared up. So we'll get this passed in. Put a flat washer. We're then going to do our split washer. And then follow it up with our nut. And you may need to kind of lift up on that 
cross member to kind of get that to thread a little bit more. And then the rest of the hole should align pretty easily here. So what we're gonna do is start passing our hardware in through here. We're also gonna have our uh, threaded nuts, or our, I'm sorry, our rear cross member should have our threads lining up with these. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of hand tighten them, kind of crisscross, make sure everything's aligning properly before going on one side. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier for us. And all the combination of hardware is gonna be the same flat washer and split washer. So you can see I've gone ahead and threaded these into our rear cross member and then our front cross member, we just pass them towards the inside and then put our hardware into place. Now we're gonna go ahead and attach our side plates into our cross member. So we'll go ahead and passing it into the threaded rear one, we just need to put a split washer here. And again, we may need to kind of move our, uh, our side plate around a little bit to kind of get this in place. We're going to go ahead and attach our side plate to our cross member. So I have my bolt. I'm going to pass it through the cross member into the side plate here. And you may need to kind of move this around to kind of get it to align. And then I'm just going to finish this one up with a split washer and then with a nut. Again, we're going to keep, leave these just loosely threaded on. And then on our rear cross member, we're just going to use a split washer with our bolt and we'll get this threaded on as well. Now with everything hand tightened in place, we want to double check to make sure that we still have this nice and centered up. We're also going to be measuring down below to make sure that it's squared up before we tighten everything down. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten down um, into our rear cross member. We just want this kind of snug, not crazy tight here, but this is going to allow us to kind of get our measurement to make sure that this is squared up. That way, if you're ever using a companion where you drop it into your gooseneck, it's going to be squared up and not crooked in your bed. So snug this up to where it's just kind of flat against here. I'm going to go ahead and do that on the other side as well. And then what we're going to do is measure uh, from our cross member here um, to the edge just to make sure that it's consistent. That way, again, it's nice and square. Now, this is all while we double check to make sure that it's tied up there. So if it's nice and square in the hole and we have the same measurement here, then we're looking pretty good. Now that we're squared up um, and that my measurements are spot on, I can go ahead and tighten down our center section bolts. Uh, we're going to come back with a torque wrench, so you can snug them up pretty good, but uh, you don't have to get crazy here because the torque wrench will get them nice and perfect. Um, on these ones, you're going to have to put a wrench on the back side uh, as you tighten down the nut side. So we'll go ahead and I'm going to just do kind of a cross pattern. That way it's nice and even as we go. Now some of these, you obviously, uh, with our latch mechanism here, it's gonna get a little bit trickier to get these tight with the socket, so you may have to use a ratcheting wrench here. So now I'm gonna go back with my torque wrench, and I'm using the torque settings found in the instruction manual. And uh, it is gonna get tricky here, um, but having a torque wrench is gonna make sure that we get the proper torque on them, and it's gonna make sure that they're not too tight, but also that they're not gonna become loose over time. And if you need to pick up a torque wrench, we actually have them available here at E-Trailer. Uh, you can rent them at an auto parts store as well, generally. Um, now, on the ones that have the nuts here, again, you are gonna probably have to have that wrench on there to get the proper torque setting. In some of the tighter spots, we may need to use a crow's wrench uh, or a crow's foot attachment on here to get those properly torqued down. So this is generally, it seems to be the tedi most tedious uh, portion of the install. So just take your time, make sure they get all torqued down properly. So now we're gonna go ahead and tighten down our side plates and there is an order that we're gonna follow. We're gonna do the two that go into the cross member first. Then we're gonna do the one that we ran the stud through the frame. And then finally, we're gonna go ahead and do the ones on the U-bolts. Now these, uh, Two cross members and the one that we fed through are going to be the same torque setting as the other bolt, uh, hardware that we did on the cross section, um, but our U-bolts are going to be significantly less. So I'm going to go ahead and snug these down, but the U-bolts, careful not to get too crazy here because the torque setting is quite a bit lower than the other hardware. So go ahead and snug them down in the proper order. 
So now at this point, we can go ahead and get our lifting device out since everything's tightened down. So on our driver's side, we're gonna need to drill a hole for our handle to go through, through our wheel well liners. So just kind of flap these back and you're gonna measure eight and three quarters from the rear hole up. So you can see where I made just a small mark there. And I'm just gonna run a pilot hole through, put the handle in and see how that looks, make sure it's lined up. And then from there, we can enlarge the hole. So once I can kind of see that it's gonna at least line with our assembly pretty well, just see where you might need to trim out a little bit more. And mine, I'm seeing that I need to go up a little bit higher. So when I go ahead with my uh, step bit, I'll make it a little bit larger on the top portion. Now, mine did not fit through this. The eyelet was a little bit larger than here. So to make it a little bit easier, I just passed the handle through here and we're just gonna kind of go the back way. So uh, it's kind of unfortunate that it's like that, but we are still gonna make it work here. So get this passed through to through your wheel well liner. So now we're just gonna go ahead and attach this and you're gonna see the eyelet's gonna be on the side that's not flush, you can see the tabs kind of welded on here. It's hard to see, um, but you want it sitting on the side that's protruding as far as the, uh, the shaft there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my carriage bolt, pass that through the square, and then back that up using our flange nut. So now at this point, we need to go ahead and drill our holes for our safety loops. So uh, you can see under our center section here, that's gonna pretty well align it for us. So I'll get my drill bit and I'm gonna just drill straight up and just make sure that it's gonna be large enough to pass our U-bolts through. Now we'll just go ahead and do the same uh, for the remaining holes. On the driver's side where the latch is, it may be hard to get a drill bit and a drill up there. So if you have to, you can use a smaller uh, pilot hole to kind of just create a small hole and then enlarge it from the top. Main thing is you're going to want to drill it out just enough to be able to pass this through. So enlarge as necessary. Sometimes you're going to fight the threads a little bit, but that's okay as long as you can get it to pass in. That's what we're looking for. So go ahead and do that on both sides to where your U-bolts can pass in. And then once you get those drilled out, you're going to want to go ahead, vacuum this out, uh, file those edges, and then also hit that with a little bit of that paint marker or spray paint just to protect it. Once that's all cured, you can drop these in and head underneath your truck to finish up the spring portion. So now we're gonna go ahead and grab our springs and we're gonna just feed this up and grab the nut to hand tighten this on for now. And once we kind of get these all in place, we'll go ahead and tighten them down to where it's flush with the bottom of the U-bolt. Now do be careful as you go to tighten these, sometimes these can kind of get stuck in, in between the threads and it'll uh, not only mess up the threads, but it can mess up the spring. So just kind of push those up as you tighten them. Again, we're just going to make these flush. So that should be just about right. Go ahead and repeat that for the other ones. Now's a good time to make sure that our handle operates properly without rubbing it on anything. And if you need to make any more adjustments as far as the wheel wall liner or anything like that. So now all that's left to do before towing is drop the ball in, latch it in place, and you're ready to go. And that was a look and installation of the B&W Underbed Gooseneck Kit on a 2022 GMC Sierra.